chance to host an NCAA regional was not something many expected from this team. Picked to finish 12th in the conference, the Rebels spent all of 2019 proving the competition, the fans, and the entire country wrong. And a strikeout of the final batter of the night. Six straight retired in her first save of the season for Brittany Finney. Hawk sends this one deep to left and kiss it goodbye. Latham hard hit ball left side. A walk off grand slam. Finney crushes it to left field. This game is over. Now with their resume written and the Rebels penned as regional hosts is an opportunity to prove themselves again on a bigger stage and a chance to defend home. Fingers crossed, going to be hosting a regional. Uh, we're going to see where we end up, and we're really excited. My heart says we host. Okay. My brain says we go. So, we'll see. Either way, it doesn't matter. Right. Either way, it doesn't matter. Great day to be a Rebel. Um, we're excited about being able to host a regional here. You know, two years ago was something pretty special in 2017, and now getting a chance to host in 2019. We just got to have our A game all the time. You know, we're going to, like you said, we're going to see some great com competition coming into these last few weeks. You know, we're down to the wire, down to the, you know, the teams that have really shown out in this season. And I think um, coming into the season, it's really going to take a lot of grit and a lot of um, mental toughness as well as physical toughness. Um, it's really, especially for myself, handle it all. Every year we've taken the next step and we're never turning back. So the first year went to our first uh, regional. Then the next year it was like, that's expected. We're expected to make regionals. It's no longer a hope that you make it. And now it's like we're expecting to host. You know, and I think that's something that we've just transformed the program into it becoming a normal thing. And not, it's not a shock anymore that we're in a regional. We're trying to host. We're trying to be a high seed. We're just excited to play softball in the postseason. So whether we're here or we're away, we're just ready to keep it going and extend the end for the people who are going to lead next year. Yeah, last year we were sitting at Buffalo Wild Wings hoping we were going to make the postseason. Right. And this year we were hoping we were going to host. So it's really just like a it's super cool yeah, to see like the transition. Yeah, yeah, 180 from last year to know like, OK, we really have a shot at hosting versus, OK, we have to we have to make postseason. Yeah. The crowd presence and what they are able to bring for us, it's, you know, it's having, I guess, a 10th man. Um, Tenth woman, I guess, or whatever you want to call it. So actually, it'd probably be eleven since we have a DP in there. So um, just that crowd's going to be huge for us this weekend. The home slate would begin with the champs of the Southern Conference, the Chattanooga Mocs. For the Rebels, the focus and attention to detail would be there from the very beginning. There goes Becker down, and there won't be a throw from Beltran behind the plate. Comes inside, walks in a run, 1-0 Ole Miss. And he's really done a nice job at Chattanooga. Speaking of doing a nice job, Horton's going to send this one out to the wall in left center field. She's thinking three. Three runs up on the board, and Ole Miss leads it 4-0 early on. Horton's fifth career triple. 
Willie's going to drop it down, charging on the third baseman. Brown, she throws it into the outfield. Whitley's being sent to second, where she will stand up. Boy, not what you want to see if you're a fan of the mocks. She laces it right back up the middle. Around third comes Whitley. Throw won't be made to the plate, and the Rebels increase their lead to 6-0. We had a little bit of a rough patch there at the end, you know, of our regular season or our regular SEC season. And so coming out and, you know, putting it on them and starting off the game really hot was just incredible. I think it gave us all so much confidence. Our motto is always to punch first. That's always what we want to do as a team. That was just us carrying out like what our plan was. You always have to take every team as if they're the best in the country and, um, you know, to come out hot against Chattanooga like that, I think definitely helped us. It brought up a lot of confidence for our team and just, we needed that after um, losing an SVP tournament. I think we needed that quick confidence booster of like, all right, we're really good. We deserve this 11 seed and just have fun and go play. With a commanding lead in hand, the offense wouldn't let up. But more importantly, on defense, the Revs would be just as good with senior pitcher Brittany Finney leading the way. She get her team going early. Payoff pitch. Swung on and missed. Finney leaves the runner at third. Other her. Inside corner. What placement there from Finney. Called on the outside corner. Finney is hot to start this game. Her fourth strikeout. And the Rebels will come back to the plate. Puck sits back on it, bloops it right over the shortstop. A two RBI single for Jessica Puck, and Ole Miss leads it 8-0. Roth with another base hit up the middle. Puck being waved home, she'll get in easily, and Ole Miss extends their lead to nine. 12-0 in favor of these Rebels. And Ava Tillman will take over. Being able to get Finney out early, um, especially with the weather, um, knowing potentially what could transpire over the course of that weekend, um, limit her the number of innings, the energy that she's exuding out, uh, to be able to have her later on down the road, being able to potentially throw another game or come in relief. Ground ball left side. Roth has time to throw over to Latham. Gets it there with no issues. And Ole Miss is going to take down Chattanooga in run rule fashion. Final score, 12 0. Fans would quickly pass through the gates ahead of a much anticipated matchup with the Louisiana Ragin' Cajuns. Toting a 51 4 record into Oxford, the Rebels knew they'd be in for a fight. Very good ball club. Uh, Jerry Glasgow has done an outstanding job there in the two short years, and we knew the type of hitters that they had. We knew um, that their pitcher was was one of the best in the country. Um, we knew that they had some great transfers that came in from some uh, some Power Five conferences. Only losing four games before you come into postseason is always a really big thing. Um, so our main thing was just knowing that they had the confidence. Whenever you've won 50 games, you come in with a certain confidence that you can't lose. And sometimes that confidence is more than talent. I didn't get intimidated by that. I knew I respected them and I thought that they for sure had a great team, but I definitely didn't think that it made them better than us because they had a better record. Through the first two innings, each team would only be able to register a hit apiece. In the top of the third, the Cajuns would break the scoreless tie on a rebel error. Now they got Louisiana oh. and a pickle and Gillespie, who's so strong defensively, throws it out into the outfield. This is going to be two runs for Louisiana, and they'll take the 2 nothing lead. You, you cannot fault anybody for that. When you're in the moment and you're trying to make a decision, if that throw would have been online and the girl would have been out, it would have been a great play, and the game would have probably ended up differently. And so you can't fault a teammate for giving their best effort um, sometimes it just falls like that. You know, you just kind of have to roll with what you get, and then some things go our way, some things didn't. And I think, you know, little mistakes here, little mistakes there, it would have gone either way. You know, we hold on to that ball, we could have won. You know, we held on to that ball, they could have hit a three-run bomb. You know, you never know. Like, it's just kind of how the game goes. And I think we did a really good job of letting that happen and then sticking in the rest of the game and not just absolutely letting the floodgates open and just kind of giving up. 
The pitcher's duel would continue for the remainder of the game. But unfortunately for the Rebels, that meant that they would come up short, falling two to nothing. Called strike three, Ellison seventh of the game, and the Raging Cajuns have the rest of the day off. They advance right to the regional final tomorrow. Final score, 2-0, a program record 29th straight win. There was no doubt in anybody's mind that we wanted to win, and I think we were ready to lay our lives down for that. You can't let the pressure get to you too much, you know? You have to trust, like, what you have and, like, what you're doing, and so I feel like, yeah, we had the pressure on us that it was one and done, but we also had the confidence in our team knowing that we're here as the one seed and we're here to win it. This is it, the elimination game for both of these programs. You're either playing tomorrow or you're going home. While the confidence exuded through the team, for some, the pressure of a win or go home matchup meant something a little different. Personally, as a senior, I was not calm and relaxed. I did not want for that to be the last game in my career. We talked as a team, and I think we just have such a great connection that everybody, they wanted it to not be the last game, so everybody came out firing on all cylinders. Latham gets all of this one. Two nothing Ole Miss here in the first. Latham's ninth homer of the year. And this round tripper gives Ole Miss the early lead. And once again, Missy, they throw the first punch. That's exactly right. And she hit that ball as high as she did far. I was really thinking, like, do it for my seniors. I didn't want their season to end that day. And they didn't want their season to end that day. And I didn't want any anybody's season on the team to end that day. And so I was just going out there and trying to play the best ball that I could. You know, and offensively, I feel like that's where I make my – my biggest impact, and so I was just hoping to do my job. Setting the tone for that for that that game was a huge important piece. It kind of makes you relax a little bit, especially after the loss. Sometimes that's just one of those games where just you just want to keep going. You want to put up as many runs as you can, and just let our offense know that we're good and that you know we're confident coming into that next game. Puck puts down the bun. It's a squeeze play, and Lofton comes around to score. Lofton kind of ducks around the catcher there, Donald. She puts it right back up the middle. It's stopped by the second baseman, Bandy, but not before a run comes home. 5 0, they lead it. High hops it over the circle. No play to be made. Kylan Becker with an infield single that results in another run. 6 0, Ole Miss. And Latham's going to tack on at least one more around third. Allie got waved initially, then the stop sign was thrown up. How about Abby Latham? I mean, what, what more can you say in this game in the first inning? She hits a home run, gets a single. That's her third RBI in the first inning. It's always good when you go up to a team with a good game plan. You know, in Scout Report, we always develop the best plan possible. But I think also just the encouragement that we had from our teammates to like let it not be the end. I felt like that really like clicked something in us and we just wanted to go out there and perform in the best way possible and get as many runs on the board. Rock tattoos it. Left center field, a two run shot. And the Rebels have blown it wide open. 10 nothing here in the top of the fourth. I think it gave us more confidence coming off a loss to know, okay, we can still do this. You know, we are still the same team we were hours ago, you know, prior in that game, you know, even before that game, we were still the same team. And I think coming out and, you know, scoring first and scoring early and every often and everything like that was just really good um, for our confidence really to carry us into the next day. Tough play here. Allie, the throw to first. And Ole Miss does it. They take down Southeast Missouri, run rule fashion. Final score 10 to 0. And the Rebels have a chance to defend their home turf and play against Louisiana tomorrow in the regional championship. What a game we had between these two teams yesterday. A 2-0 win. 
for Louisiana. But Ole Miss is going to have to beat these Cajuns twice. They're in the driver's seat, and that's going to be a challenge considering in 56 games this year, Louisiana has lost four times. Louisiana's in the driver's seat, but they better figure out Summer Ellison. We knew that they were going to ride and die off of Ellison, so we knew that after that first loss that we just needed to go back and watch some films. We watched everything. We watched the sequences and what her ball had tendencies to do that we didn't pick up on the, on the first time. I felt like the girls really learned from their bats. They had an opportunity to watch some of their bats. So I think we had a really good game plan against Ellison. Um, and again, we took the philosophy as, hey, let's try to get that starter out early and get to the bullpen. The game would start with two scoreless innings, much like the first. But this time, the third inning would belong to the Rebels. Kayla Alley gets a hold of one. And the freshman gives Ole Miss the one nothing lead. Her second career home run, this one in an NCAA regional. I was so happy when I saw that come off of her bat. I just knew, I just knew it was gonna go out. She's worked so hard all season. She's such a major part of our team. And so for her to, to get that home run and start that big inning for us, I feel like that was such a big moment for her and such a big moment for the team and I'm so proud that she could finally step in that role and and get it done for us because she did it in the best way possible. Ball's down in the zone a little bit and Ali just goes down and gets it. Not too shabby of a career when it comes to her power numbers. Her first home run against Kelly Barnhill. Her second here against Ellison in the regional. That was a proud moment from a coach. I know it was an exciting moment for her and um, just kind of really set, continue to set that tone and set the uh, set the table for us to be able to continue to score. Coming off of Michaela's home run, the defense was just shook. I think they were not, they're not used to somebody hitting Ellison like that, especially a freshman. So I think I went up kind of like, all right, they're, they're a little bit shaken up right now. I'm going to lay down a bunt and see how they react to that. Becker's going to lay down the bunt. Grimion was all over it, but throws it past. Shomo covering the bag. And Becker's heading to third, being waved home. Ole Miss takes a 2-0 lead. And Becker is mobbed at home plate. And I really think that that right there kind of shut them down. I think um, you got the long ball, and then you got the short game, and they couldn't defend either one of them. So it kind of really shut them down um, mentally. I think it freaked them out a little bit. And then getting Ellison out is huge for us because that kind of just showed that we just probably forced game three. They're playing it safe now. They're trying to play game three. So we knew that take care of business for this game and we got game three because we're going to face her again. That girl run. With Ellison out of the game, the Rebels would not let up their attack. Sophomore Abby Latham would take the baton and pick up where Kylan left off. Latham jumps all over the relief pitcher with a solo shot. Three nothing Rebels. Oh, he talked about. Uh, oh, Mike Smith has talked about throwing the first punch all weekend long, and boy, they've thrown the first punch in this game today. And and the Ole Miss offense keeps rolling. Horton rips it into center field. Gillespie scores. Lofton scores, and Horton has her second triple of this regional. With a solid lead in hand, Molly Jacobson will continue to put the squeeze on the Louisiana lineup, striking out eight and only allowing one unearned run. Oh boy, the knee buckler there for the strikeout, the first of the third. Jacobson strikeout number five, the second time she sat down the newcomer of the year in the Sun Belt. Yeah. And again, the knees buckling of the raging Cajuns. Molly Jacobson in control. Payoff pitch. Swung on and missed. Jacobson sits down Julie Rawls for the second out. Molly has been, you know, that workhorse the entire year and um, I thought she pitched a great ball game in that first one that we lost, and we just wanted her to give her the ball to give her another opportunity um, to give us a shot at, at uh, winning a regional. And so, I, although Molly was, although their lineup saw Molly multiple times in the previous game, her ability to come back and still shut them down was really big. 
Batter in the box is Raina O'Neal. Sent up in the air, Tate Whitley drifting into foul territory, but she'll make the catch for the final out. Molly Jacobson snaps Louisiana's 29 game win streak and forces a winner take all game here at the Ole Miss Softball Complex. The Oxford Regional would come down to this. One game, one last showdown. Win or go home. The stakes could not be bigger, and the Rebels were all too ready for showtime. There was just a relaxed confidence that we had stepping out on the field that time, and we knew that we could beat them again. Your season can come to an end, but I mean, I really, I really felt good if we could get it to an if game. Um, that Kylan Becker and, and Brittany Finney, our seniors, weren't going to let it in that way. It's just so awesome to think about, you know, this could be the end, but it's not going to be. You know, it's like we all wanted to control our own end at that point. We all wanted to continue our season and things like that. And I think we did a really good job of just holding on to that we're not done feeling. If I didn't want our last game at, in Oxford to be a loss. You know, we've worked way too hard all year. Um, the seniors worked way too hard for four years for our last game to be here in an Oxford Regional. We knew that this was our home and home field, and this was meant for us to win. <laughs> This is not the last time I'm putting this jersey on. Woo Andy or Brittany are putting this jersey on. I don't feel it. Yes. It's not happening. We are winning on our home team. Woo! 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 We are too good to not continue and go on. We are too good. Senior Brittany Finney would take the circle for the Rebels and sit Louisiana down 1-2-3 to start the game. The Rebels would waste little time grabbing the early lead. That one came right inside, caught Becker as she made her approach, the slap hitter. Something you never want to do, put Kylan Becker on. Gillespie puts down the bunt, third base side, she's digging down the first base line and she'll get there. Nice bunt by Autumn Gillespie and the corner's back, not tight enough on that bunt. Alvarez picked up a pair of hits in the game earlier today, has three of them against Louisiana this weekend. Puts it right back up the middle. It's redirected off Ellison in the circle. Becker comes home to score. Gillespie into third. And she'll be safe there with Alvarez standing on second. one nothing, Ole Miss. So once again, Ole Miss throws the first punch. Scoring in the first inning now for the 26th time. 2-2 offering from Ellison. Broke down the left field. Gillespie will come home to score. Lofton being held at third. And we've got a 2 0 ball game in favor of the Ole Miss Rebels. The lead was theirs, and the defense would back it up with more than spectacular play. In the mid to high 100s, which isn't what we're used to seeing from the Cajuns. Kylan Becker, are you kidding me? Goes over the fence, pulls the ball back, and makes an outstanding grab for an out. Wow. That was insane. I thought it was gone. Wow, what a catch. Two outs, the count, one and two. Here's the offering from the senior, Brittany Finney. She blows by her and erupts with emotion as she strikes out Lexi Como to get out of the frame. All the momentum was on the side of the Rebels. But one thing was for sure. A team that had won over 50 games was not going to go down without a fight. First at bat for Shomo in the game. She gets the job done, rolls it right through the infield for a one out base knock. And there's Alyssa Dalton coming through, rips it into right field. And with one out, the Raging Cajuns have two aboard. Finney's gonna get her here on strikes. Huge out, puts two up on the board. He's gonna take the ball away from Finney. A great outing from Brittany Finney. Four and two thirds, five hits, no runs. This is her third game pitch this weekend. She's kept the goose egg up on the board in each outing. It's all of this one, a three-run shot. 
and we're all tied up here in the championship game of the Oxford Regional. Oh my goodness, can you believe it? Finney was in the ball game and she was throwing well and um, we did, I, I felt like the matchup coming up was gonna be a good one, the lefty-lefty and Molly uh, threw well against her the game before and as a coach, you make sometimes you make some decisions, sometimes um, you know, you feel good about them and I felt good about that and um, the girl got a good pitch and got Molly in a good situation and hit a home run and you tip your cap to her, it's big a big time player in a big time moment. Oh, this one gets past Gillespie. Here comes a run, and the Louisiana Ragin' Cajuns take the lead here in the sixth. The crowd was a little shook. They were quiet, so obviously that momentum wasn't our way like it was at the beginning of the game, but I think we definitely did a good job of keeping our cool. We slowed the game down. We didn't let things speed up on us. It was not like a defeat moment for any of us. I don't think any of us thought, well, all right, we're done. You know, we're not going to play. I think it was, uh, okay. You know, they want to see what we can do and we're going to, you know, continue to play and we're going to keep on and keep going. I feel like nobody truly gave up. Nobody wanted to lose that game and so I feel like we made a decision with all of our hearts to do whatever we had to do possible to win that game. Summer Ellison and the Louisiana Ragin' Cages three outs from the Super Regional. It'll be Allie in the top of the order for the Rebels here in the seventh inning. Allie's going to rope this one to right center field. O'Neal won't get there. It goes off the wall. And Michaela Allie at second with a leadoff double. She was able to set the table and roll it back over for the top of our lineup. And uh, that, was a, that was a proud moment from a coach. And that is her job as a nine hole hitter is turning that lineup over. And that's exactly what she did. But not only did she turn the lineup over, she got to second base without having to sacrifice anything. What a day for Michaela Allie, the home run in game one. And the double here. Becker's gonna roll it to the right side. Nobody picks it up. Ole Miss is gonna have runners on the corners with nobody out. Do you try a squeeze play here? Looks like they're going to. She puts it out. Grimion scoops it up, but it won't matter. Cooper comes across, and we're all tied up at four. Gillespie wisely takes second. She'll flaunt it out there on the back. I really felt deep down in my heart um, that she was gonna step up for us. Again, another thing, big players come up in big moments and I, I kinda just got that feeling and she laid down a perfect squeeze bunt and we're able to tie that game up and um, she stepped up. Haley Horton, the junior right fielder, deep breath. She's one for three today with an RBI single. Four, four in the bottom of the seventh inning. If I said it once, I've said it a hundred times. What more can you ask for? <laughs> Swing here, high hops it to Dalton, it's short, and it's gonna bring the winning run home. Kaylee Horton gets the job done, and the Rebels are off to their second ever Super Regional. When Michaela got that double, that was huge, and I knew game was over at that point. I got a little nervous that I wasn't going to back it up, but then I did, and our team just really stepped up, and every single person executed when time was on crunch. And honestly, that just shows how much this team loved each other. They wanted to do it for us seniors more than anything, and I love them so much. Man, I saw that squeeze sign, and I was like, he must be joking. Like, I missed the bunt two innings before, and I was like, oh, God, okay, it's my time to redeem myself. And 
I literally put it down and could not believe that I put it down. I forgot to run. Like, it was just the most amazing experience. Like, and then I heard that she was safe at home, and it was just so excited. And this team is so much fun to play for, and we all love each other so much. It just, it literally means the world that we get to play together for these seniors one more time. Going in, getting the lead was incredible. Got down a little bit, gave it up, you know what I mean? But I never doubted this team. The hitters got clutch and clutch and clutch and just killed it at the end, and they just... I have no words. That's, I seriously just want to go home and cry and cry and cry. I'm so excited. Uh, what an inning. Um, Michaela coming up with a big double. Um, the squeeze that Autumn put on, the safety squeeze by Gabby. Um, then, of course, our number five hitter, our slapper, comes up and just high hops it, and we score the run. Game over. Um, I can't say enough about this team, the resiliency. I said at the beginning of the year, this team is something special. I'm excited. Thanks. would match up with the Arizona Wildcats. Although they would ultimately come up short on their goal to advance to the College World Series, there were plenty of moments to build upon for the future. Packed dirt, the ball's gonna bounce. Out to short, it's bobbled, and Ole Miss is on the board. Beckers in to score, one nothing Rebels as Horton safe at first and Gillespie goes to third. Finney gets a big swing and a miss. From Deja Mulipola, a much needed out. And Becker has. That's a fair ball all the way to the corner. Campbell's got to play it perfectly. Green light for Becker at third. The throw to the plate is late. Throw to third, not in time as well. Ole Miss back in front, two to one. Shadow and the sunny sky. That is absolutely crushed out to left field. Gillespie nearly cleared the bleachers with her fifth home run of the year, and it ties the game at one. We went into that weekend knowing that we had the ability to make it to the College World Series. Obviously, it wasn't in the plans for us, but we knew that we had the ability. We never let um, the atmosphere, the environment intimidated us to the point where we're like, oh, like we're just grateful to be here. Like obviously, like we are very grateful to be there, but we also knew that we could go to Oklahoma. Some young players learn from some tough situations, and they're going to be better ball players um, down the road. And I'm excited to where our program's at and where this team of 2018, excuse me, 2019 took us. Um, and sky's the limit for what our future holds. As with any season. The final out means its time has run out for a select few. Saying goodbye is never easy. Becker not ready to see the career come to a close. Down to her final strike. And she's got a single on the infield or via strikeout. A lot of emotion from the senior knowing that could potentially be her last at-bat in the Ole Miss uniform. Being a Rebel means the world to me. Um, best decision I could have ever made is coming here into this program. We have an amazing coaching staff, an amazing town, just such a great support system, and I honestly am forever in debt to this program. I just love everything about it. It's made me the woman I am today, and just honestly, there's nothing better than being a Rebel. I can't say enough about our senior class, you know, Kylan and, and Brittany and Izzy and what they've been able to do and each of them had a different um, time here. They've had a different path, um, but all have been a huge part of our program. Um, you know, Izzy stepping in and really helping us out behind the plate. Um, Finney coming in and leaving a national championship team and really taking a chance on a coaching staff and an up-and-coming, hopefully, organization. And Kylan Becker spending four years and, and being a starter all four years. An outstanding player, one that will go down in, in Ole Miss history, potentially, arguably, one of the best players ever to, to don a Rebels uniform, and they've really laid a foundation and created their own legacy um, and left this program better 
than where they found it. Coming out of this season, I really don't have any regrets, you know, and I think I tried to lay everything out there and I, you know, made relationships that I gonna love for the rest of my life and I think um, that's one of the biggest joys I take from that and after the game was over and I made my decision you know um, to walk away you know leave the sport obviously it was my last game and I left my cleats there I was knelt down and I was thinking you know like this is it and this is the last time I'll ever play but it's not over you know I'm still in the game it's still a part of me it's made me the woman I am today it's taught me so many lessons and brought me so many incredible people in my life that I'm gonna cherish for the rest of my life I'm never gonna give enough to the sport to give half the things it's given to me. Thank you.